Ahoy hoy! Today we're going to do another reaction video to an infographics show um, video called This is the Most Scary SCP. Uh, of course, that's a subjective term. What does most scary mean to you? Whatever most scary means to you might mean something else completely different to a, someone else. But the video I'm reacting to is not unprompted this time around. Um, the first time I did a reaction to infographics, it was because the uh, people in general were asking me to do so. This time around, I've actually been in contact with the infographics show, and they have uh, actually sent me this video as a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? An example of how they believe they've done it right. And um, how they believe that they have fact-checked this to death and that there should be no mistakes in it. I doubt that's true, just because it's never possible to create something perfect. Even I make mistakes all the time. Like, I'm somehow... I say that like somehow I'm incapable or even well-known for in ma not making mistakes, but I'm sure I'm, I'm wrong about stuff too sometimes. Regardless, I'm going to go through this. Anything that I can spot that's off, I'll try to point out. It's a 13 minute and 40 second video, so if it is... Uh, as correct as they say, there may be a bit of jumping around, uh, because otherwise I'll just be sitting there for five, ten minutes not saying anything. We'll, we'll give it a try and see, though. So, let's get started. The SCP Foundation is an organization dedicated to protecting humanity from the supernatural. Whether it's dark gods, cursed objects, or killer creatures. But today, there's been a containment breach, and the fate of the entire world is at stake. To ensure you'll survive, you'll have to arm yourselves with knowledge. Thankfully, we've got you covered. With the lowdown on 10 of the scariest monsters that the Foundation has to offer. We'll start on what you might call the mild end of the spectrum. We'll say, using the phrase 10 of the scariest monsters, rather, uh, the title says this is the most scary SCP, but obviously that's a subjective saying. Uh, 10 of the most uh, scary creatures that you can find or in the SCP Foundation um, indicates that, of course, it's a subjective list or that at the very least there could be 10 more. You know, there's not it's not really a top 10 so much as a listing of 10 scary SCPs, which is fine. And end with pure unfiltered <sighs> nightmare fuel. Beware and be ready. It's time to face your dark. No, but it is supposed to progress. Number 10, SCP-169. The Leviathan. Thalassophobia, or fear of deep water, is one of the most common fears out there, which is why we're starting our countdown with SCP-169. SCP-169 is described as a massive marine arthropod. Wait, 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 wait. Already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Still large in size. Hold on. That's not an arthropod. That is a reptile, looks like, from the head anyway. Uh, with ten limbs. Um, hmm. Hmm. I mean, this may be blamed on fan art more than anything else, but that's, and it's not that huge of a mistake. Like, this is just, uh, anyway, that's not an arthropod. That's a, that's a reptile. It's, they show a picture of a, <laughs> they're showing a picture uh, of a reptile and saying that it's described as an arthropod. So that's a thing. Um, Okay, well, we're 40. Uh, that's, that's not a great sign. 45 seconds in. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe this is. Maybe there won't be as. SCP 169 is described as number 9. SCP 3663. Oh, this is one I'm not actually familiar with. SCP 3663 was once a boy between the ages of 8 and 12 who, while playing in some disuse. This is not one I'm familiar with. I actually thought. When I saw a cardboard box that this was maybe I had forgotten the number to one of my own SCPs, which is about a child in a cardboard box. But no, this is a completely different child in a cardboard box. So that's a thing. The real horror comes from the fact that the SCP Foundation has yet to discover what caused the boy to become fused to his homemade costume or what led to his mental degradation, meaning that this horrible fate could potentially happen again to any unsuspecting child. Again, I'm not familiar with the article. It says the SCP Foundation can't find out what causes mental degradation, but uh, nothing that they just described includes mental degradation. It sounds like he's just still a child. If that isn't existentially terrifying enough for you, just wait, because the worst is yet to come. The next SCP causes changes that are even deadlier and more unbelievable, and it might be in your house right now. Number 8. I am SCP-426, and I am an ordinary toaster. Confused about why I'm talking about this SCP? 
right there. This SCP. Okay. If you're gonna if if you're gonna steer into the conceit that I am a toaster, then you have to continue. I'm not doing it right now, by the way. I'm just uh, talking about it in the abstract. Uh, you can't say stuff like this SCP because this SCP is a toaster. Therefore, it is you. It would be it would, it would make it very difficult, very very difficult to talk about. Which is why um, <laughs> you would. What would that sentence be in that sentence in that? P four twenty six. I am a toaster. I'm an ordinary toaster. Confused about why I'm talking about this SCP. Confused why I'm talking about myself in this manner would be the uh, yeah. In the first person. Well, any humans attempting to describe this anomaly are unconsciously compelled to only refer to me in the first person. There seems to be no way to avoid doing this, and the more time humans spend around me, the compulsion to refer to me in the first person evolves into a genuine belief that they themselves are also toasters. Though this might sound ridiculous at first, the effect quickly takes a turn for the deadly. I was originally discovered by the Foundation when members of the family who first owned me were found dead in their home. The wife had died from electrocution I mean, that's the only after putting her tongue into an electrical socket the only mistake. to plug herself into the wall, while her mother had swallowed so much bread that her stomach ruptured. According to the Foundation, the harmful effects start to manifest after about two months God, of continuously so being in my past instances have included a giant bat, a bear-sized animal with spines like an echidna, and a humanoid reptilian creature. And if that isn't bad enough, many people at the research site built to con I mean... It's hard for me to remember exactly what shows up in the article itself, but those are the three least threatening things I can imagine coming in. A bear, a giant bat, a reptile creature. Uh, nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying. Like, those are the least scary things I can imagine coming out of there. Have you ever found yourself on the wrong bus? So the living bus is another one that I'm not familiar but with. But imagine if the bus are indistinguishable from an ordinary city bus. SCP-2086 nests in junkyards, building nests from old scrap metal for their children, who are much smaller. Wait, city bus? Because they're showing a school bus. Sir I feel like maybe I have I, this vaguely feels familiar. As decoy bus drivers, but even this will still seem like a pleasant. He's so happy. The victims of our next horrifying monster, number four, SCP-049, the Plague Doctor. I never really SCP thought of this is particularly is a scary. That resembles a medieval plague doctor, but instead of healing patients, this creature has been known to cause what could be described as a fate worse than death. SCP-049 is humanoid, and while it looks like someone in a Plague Doctor costume, tests have concluded that the cloak, hat, and mask are all part of the creature's body. It can communicate in multiple languages, and has stated its main goal is to rid the world of pestilence. Nobody is clear on what that means, but the SCP will get extremely agitated and aggressive if it encounters anyone it deems as infected with pestilence. Anyone this creature touches will die immediately and autopsies have been inconclusive on the cause of death. If after killing a person, SCP-049 decides that the pestilence hasn't been cured, it will conduct a surgery using a variety of strange tools. Once this sur- It's not fully technically accurate. It doesn't do that thing that hasn't been cured. It's, it uses that ability on bodies regardless. Like in the current article, it even uses it on animal- I mean, it uses it on animal bodies. It's requesting- uh, higher level animals such as apes more often, but it's uh really wants humans and it doesn't get an opportunity to a lot of this hmm. Then again, there may be some conflicts here between the old version of it and the new version of it I don't really think there's too much of a difference in this particular area though It doesn't I don't think it experiments. I'm this is a think this is not a I think you're wrong This is not a you're wrong thing necessarily as much as I think you're wrong but I, I vaguely recall, and since I voice uh, one of the characters, I voice uh, Dr. Raymond Ham in the actual article itself, I've got a little bit more than a passing familiarity with it. Uh, I've re reread it a couple times because uh, I enjoy my own work. But um, yeah, I, I recall very strongly he just experiments now. Like he doesn't care. I don't think he, and I don't think he did it that, I think that's pretty much how he did it before too. Anyway, we'll keep going. Surgery is complete. The patient will often rise from the dead as a mindless zombie. Yeah, this is still At true, this though. Point, SCP-049 will deem them to be cured. Number three, SCP-087, the staircase. Imagine the deepest, darkest basement you can think of. Now imagine it goes on forever. 
That's essentially the core of what SCP-087 is. This SCP is a staircase located somewhere on a university campus that is so dark and so deep that even a 75 watt bulb can only illuminate a couple of steps at a time. I mean, the staircase hold has. On. The way that was phrased made it sound like a 75 watt bulb was particularly powerful, uh, which I found particularly funny. Uh, not a, not an error necessarily, but it, it's a weird way to phrase that. Even a 75 watt bulb since <laughs> no end extending far below what both the layout of the building and the geography of the area around it should allow. When walking down the staircase, individuals will at some point begin hearing a child's voice, calling up to them from about 200 meters below. No matter how far they descend, however, the child's voice never gets any closer. Well, no it's not happy this time? Seen. What has been seen, however, is a disembodied white face with no pupils, mouth, or nostrils that appears behind people who try to descend the staircase. Wait, this face, hold known on. As SCP, what? No. It doesn't appear behind people. That's a fairly major error. I would have thought that would have been gotten caught. There's no... Nothing in the article says that it appears behind people. It appears in front of people. That's literally how it works. I mean, like, sort of important to how it works. People descend down the stairs and then they see the, the face coming out of the darkness. And then... <clears throat> now, it does sometimes chase people, so it can, of course, be behind you. But it appear it Like, every appearance I recall out of the experiments and in the article itself it appears at first in front of you like it even does that in the uh the surveillance footage that they use for the uh image 087-1 is not the source of the child voices but in some cases it's been recorded chasing scp foundation d-class personnel up and down the staircase we don't know exactly what happens when the face catches you but we're pretty sure we don't want to know Almost no one who runs into SCP-087-1 has returned back to the top of the staircase, and those that did were left in terrible states that might even be worse than death. Number 2. SCP-1076 – The Only Child Humans have a natural drive to care for their young, and that compassion is part of what has allowed us to thrive as a species. What makes SCP-1076 so scary is that it seems to be a creature specifically evolved to exploit that very instinct. SCP-1076 is a race of creatures that resemble disheveled, homeless human children. So this isn't a criticism of the video so much as a criticism of this SCP, but you know what always bothered me about this one? It's a compulsion effect. So they build up this thing as this uh, outwardly very easy to under very easy to care for cre you know creature. It's a little child that uh, needs your help. Like it looks like it, it. It everything about it says that it's a little child that needs your help. But who cares? Because it just immediately puts off a compulsion effect that would, if it was a, a six foot tall spider monster, which maybe it is. If it was a six foot tall spider monster, it would still be cared for like it was a small child. So what does it matter what it looks like other than for thematic reasons? But at the same time, that means that you got, it feels very compulsion effects tend to not trust your audience properly. Like you could create this exact same SCP just out of the human nature to want to care for other people. You don't need to create a compulsion effect where you care for it until you die. Anyway. You can create it as maybe like a replacement child sort of thing. We have the most terrifying of all. Number one, SCP-096. The shy I don't have to explain to you why SCP-096 isn't necessarily all that scary, right? Unless you don't look at his face, you're fine. They put a bag over his head, you're fine. And even on a, like... Civilization scale threat, it's not a particularly scary or scary SCP. Uh, hmm. Well, it's an odd choice for number one, let's just say that much. We'd love to show you a real picture of what SCP 096 is. still so like. happy. But if we did, we see, we told you it was horrifying. If you're hungry for more creepy creatures, check. Okay, well, I'll say this it's definitely a lot a lot better than the original ones that I reacted to. I wouldn't say that it was necessarily perfect, but what is? Um, yeah, yeah, they've done a much better job of their fact checking. It's just small little errors here and there that honest to God in the SCP community are probably going to distract people from the content. But what can you do about that? Anyway, uh, that's my take on this one. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you're not subscribed already and you like to watch my videos, please hit the subscribe button. It's not a joke. It's not a little perfunctory thing. It's very important to the growth of every channel that you that you uh, watch on YouTube. And right now you're watching mine. So after that, head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted, Vivi, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I'll see you all again on Thursday.